preseason's finally over. It's out the way. We're back. NFL's back in full swing. Bills and Rams just played yesterday. Bills look really tough. We beat them last year. That's kind of wild to think about. Anyways, this isn't a video about the Bills. Uh, it's a video about the Jags and our upcoming game on Sunday against the Commanders. Side note, why did they switch from the Commanders or switch from the football team to the Commanders? The football team was a way cooler name. I, I never thought I'd be able to say that, that you went from calling your NFL team the football team to a new name and have that be a downgrade, but... You know, after like a season, I kind of fell in love with the name. But anyways, not important. What I'm going to be talking about in this video is kind of like a preview of uh, the upcoming game on Sunday. Uh, go over how I'm feeling, um, what I'm looking forward to see from the Jags as well as the Commanders, and then give a score prediction uh, just to give you guys a little insight of what's going on. With that being said, let's get into it. Like I said before, uh, the NFL is back, and the Jags are picking up right where they left off uh, against Carson Wentz um, after we demolished the Colts last year in uh, Week 18 and pretty much embarrassed Carson Wentz. And you know that game, I I believe, um, you know, resulted in him being traded uh, that offseason. I think if he wins that game, you probably still see Carson Wentz in Indianapolis, and you yeah, you probably don't see Matt Ryan there. Um, but now he's in Washington. And I think we're even set up to play better against him. Uh, we got Doug Peterson as our head coach, Press Taylor as our offensive coordinator. Both guys worked with him a ton in Philly, obviously. I mean, that's the QB coach and the head coach when Carson Wentz was there for his whole career, um, or at least in Philadelphia. So if I had to bet on anybody to know how to stop Carson Wentz and know his strengths and weaknesses, I'd put all my money on Doug Peterson. Um, and then, yeah, Press Taylor. A guy who had a great relationship with Carson Wentz. So I think we're in a really good spot to neutralize him as much as we possibly can. You know what led to our success against him last year was we put the pressure on him. Uh, you put pressure on him, make him a little bit uncomfortable in the pocket, he's going to make mistakes. He's a guy that likes to play hero ball. Um, you know, try and make things happen even when you should maybe just throw it away or check it down. Carson Wentz really likes to air that thing out. So, you know, it all starts up front. And I think we're in a really good spot right now with Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen as well as any blitz combinations that Mike Caldwell can dial up. You just got to get in Carson Wentz's face and let him make mistakes. Let him beat you. Um, and more importantly, let him beat himself. Uh, so yeah, I think if we're able to put the pressure on, get after the quarterback, make him a little bit uncomfortable, let our DBs eat. And uh, I think I think that's the recipe to success. Um, and that's not saying too much. I feel like that goes without being said to any team in any scenario. You put pressure on the quarterback, good things are going to happen. But I think we're in a better spot to do that um, and realistically make it happen. As far as injuries goes, the Jags are pretty healthy. Um, except for one, we have Foley Fatukasi dealing with a calf injury and he's questionable for Sunday. Other than that, everyone's good to go. Um, even J-Rob, uh, James Robinson is a full participant and ready to go by Sunday. Um, we'll see how much that really means um, given his workload that we'll see on Sunday. I'm not expecting him to have, you know, 14, 15 carries or even touches for that matter. I think they ease him into it, but who knows? I could be wrong, but I'm excited to see it. Huge shout out to J-Rob for his ridiculous comeback and especially how, with how quick that turnaround was. If you would have told me, you know, against the Jets, like at that moment in time that he'd be ready to go by week one, would have called you crazy, but here we are. Um, it seems like he's good to go, which is just insane, so... Huge credit to James Robinson on that recovery process. Really, really awesome news to see him back and ready to go for week one. Uh, Ken Robinson appeared on the injury report as well, dealing with a bit of an ankle injury, but uh, he will be good to go Sunday. Um, that's really no issue there. But yeah, other than that, we are really healthy, which is just a blessing. Um, you don't see many teams going into the regular season at essentially full strength, which is really, really fortunate. Um, for the Jags. On the flip side, the Commanders are a bit banged up, and that's you know pretty fortunate if you're a Jags fan. Um, you won't have to play against Chase Young. He's on the IR, at least out for four weeks, so we won't have to see him, which is definitely a good thing. Uh, he's a, he's an animal. But as well as Chase Young, uh, Cameron Curl, safety, out with a thumb injury. Um, that's a pretty pretty big blow for the Commanders secondary. Um, also, pretty much their entire tight end room is on the injury report dealing with something you know pretty minor but still you know worth noting logan thomas and cole turner are both questionable um i think who, who does that leave uh john bates john bates the only tight end in that room that's not 
Oh, he's in. He's on the injury report too. Um, he was just a full participant in practice these past three days, so he'll probably be good to go. But yeah, Logan Thomas, Cole Turner, both on the injury report, um, and listed as questionable. So we'll see. And then Fedarian Mathis, uh, rookie defensive tackle. Um, he's on the injury report. Should be good to go by Sunday. Um, same with Trey Turner. Um, Trey Turner, offensive guard. Um, again, on the injury report, looks like he'll be good to go Sunday. So things I'm looking forward to. Um, really excited for Trevor Lawrence. Um, obviously, I feel like we're all in the same boat here. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to see you know who his favorite targets are. Um, I've been hearing so much about Zay Jones over the course of training camp and throughout preseason. Really excited to see it put to work. Um, as well as Christian Kirk. I, I've said this a million times. We paid him a lot of money. Really excited to see kind of where he fits in to this offensive scheme. As well as Marvin Jones. He's been here for a little bit, but, you know, a lot of new pieces around him. You know, Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, Evan Ingram, Tim Jones. Just a bunch of new pieces all around. Really excited to see the target share and who Trevor Lawrence looks towards um, when it matters. Also excited to see how much he uses his legs. Now, this is a good front seven. Ma mainly front four uh, from Washington. I mean, minus Chase Young, but they still got guys like Deron Payne, Montez Sweat. You know, guys that can put pressure on you. So I expect Trevor Lawrence to have to, you know, kind of use his legs a little bit more than you'd like to. But I'm excited to see it happen. Um, his pocket presence last year was incredible, especially for a rookie. Um, so I'm looking forward to see that as well because this is a good test for him. Also looking forward to the backfield. I know I touched on this a little earlier with James Robinson, but like I'm really excited to see what the touches look like between J-Rob and ETN. ETN, yeah, is a really great third down, you know, style back. A guy who's amazing out of the backfield, good in pass pro super agile super quick but he's also pretty built so like he's fully capable of taking those red zone and goal line touches so i'm really excited to see kind of where they work in james robinson and you know who's going to get those red zone goal line touches between the two and just to make this clear i'm not saying etn is just a third down back i'm just saying a guy who plays in that kind of style you don't really see typically as a bruiser or as a guy who really runs that hard um, but he does, and that's why he was such an elite prospect and such a dominant collegiate running back because anything you asked him to do, he could do it, and then some. So just try to like clear that up before that gets taken out of context. On the flip side, the rookies on defense. Uh, at linebacker, um, who's going to start between Devin Lloyd and Chad Muma? That's to be seen. I don't think that's come out as of yet, but I'm curious to see who gets the start. Going into the season, it was easily Devin Lloyd's job to lose, um, and it's not in question either. It's just... He was on the injury report for a while, um, dealing with that hamstring injury. So he missed a lot of practice throughout training camp, as well as a few preseason games. So he hasn't had too many snaps um, with the Jags so far and with this unit. So Chad Muma has. So that's kind of the thing is like, do you roll with the guy who's, you know, more prepared or do you roll with the talent? So I'm curious to see what they do. They're probably going to mix them in and throw both of them out there. Um, I'm, I'm not sure whoever is going to get the start really plays that much more than the guy left out but i think it'll be close um but i'm just curious to see who gets the nod also how can i talk about rookies and not mention number one overall pick trayvon walker uh, a guy who dominated throughout training camp and then turned around and dominated throughout preseason guy looked really good i am so excited to see him for four quarters of football play alongside josh allen and you know guys like Dwayne smoot arden key who i'm really looking forward to see on third downs a lot of new pieces are on that defense darius williams a cornerback who hasn't really been talked about too much Really good player. Um, a guy who played alongside Jalen Ramsey in LA. Uh, really talented corner. Um, really looking forward to see what he brings to the table. Um, safety, Andre Sisco, another guy. Um, really, really, I know I'm sounding like a broken record here, but again, I'm really, really excited to see Andre Sisco, especially rocking five. Um, 38 was like a really weird number. Um, not a huge fan of him wearing 38, but five. He is going to look tough out there. Really looking forward to seeing him play. So yeah, I'm, again, I'm really, really, really um, anticipating to see how this defense looks. So many really nice pieces. Oh, Foy, uh, Foy at Lewican. Um, almost forgot about him. Foy is, you know, an athletic freak. Comes over from Atlanta. A guy who can bring a lot of versatility to that defense. Um, can do a lot of different things. Uh, similar to Devin Lloyd. Just a guy who has a lot in his bag. Uh, can really do a lot for you. Um, so that defense, um, that was probably the thing I was looking forward to the most um, throughout this offseason. The organization really made that a focal point. Wish they would have, you know beefed up the receiving court a little bit more they decided to put more of their focus on the defensive side of the football so mike caldwell the dc has a lot of new toys to play with um, over here in jacksonville a lot of new pieces but a lot of really nice pieces that i think are going to mesh really well 
Um, so it'll be cool to see them all working together in a unit. So that's probably the thing I'm I'm probably most excited for out of everything I've said. Really, really looking forward to see what this defense is like and uh, how these pieces fit together. So with all of that being said, um, I'm going to I'm gonna say the Jags in my record prediction video. I'll link that in the description if any of you guys want to check it out. If you haven't seen it before, it's just me going through each week and predicting whether we win or lose. You know, a lot can change throughout the season. So, you know, you know, like I said, yeah, things can change. So it's not set in stone. But I had the Jags going 8-9. and nine. In that video, I had the Jags beating the Commanders. Um, this was a few months ago. And I still feel that way right now. I'm still taking the Jags here. I'm so sick of the way that we've started out our seasons over the past few years. I feel like by the end of, of like September, October-ish, I'm already doing mock drafts and looking at college players. I really don't want to have to do that until like... Hopefully I don't have to do that at all. It was so nice in 2017 to really not care about tanking and trying to get a better draft pick, even though we ended up with Taven Bryan that year, but that's you know not important. Ignore that. I really just don't want to have to do that. I want to start off strong. Sick of starting out 0-4, you know, 1-5. It's just gross. Let's get off to a good start early, really make our presence felt, and let's go win week one. We haven't won a week one matchup since we beat the Giants. Uh, I think that was like four or five years ago, and it's it's been miserable. Um, we got embarrassed last year by Houston. I don't want to see that happen again. I want to dominate on both sides of the football and win a game early and get some momentum going throughout the rest of the season. Uh, this is the tone setting game. Week one, it doesn't say too much, but in the locker room, it's huge. Um, you just want to get on that momentum early and really feel good about your team and going forward. Also, we haven't won a road game since we beat the Oakland Raiders in Oakland. Let that sink in. We beat the Oakland Raiders. That was the last time we won a road game. Oakland. They were still Oakland. So if we can win a game on the road, that's going to feel awesome. And I think this is a perfect chance to do that um, against Washington. So with that being said, I got the Jags winning 24-21. I think it'll be relatively close. Both teams have pretty good, you know, defenses as well as offenses. Um, both looking to improve from last season. And I think it's going to be a close one, especially on the road. But I'm going to go Jags 24, Commanders 21. So thank you guys for watching. I uh, appreciate you sticking with me. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. Super active on there. As well as hitting that like button and uh, subscribing to the channel. I'm going to be having videos coming out all throughout the season. Um, not just about the Jags, about the NFL as a whole. Want to start tapping into that. Might make a second channel for it. Might just keep it on here. I'm not sure yet. Um, but the focal point as of right now is still going to be Jags content. I, st I just want to branch out a little bit going forward. Um, just because you know, I'm, I'm a football head. Um, I love the NFL. I spend my entire Sunday watching pretty much every game as much as I can. Um, so I kind of want to talk about it. This is what I love doing. So I'd appreciate if you hit that like button and subscribe. Uh, and then, yeah, drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I think we win this game. I, I doubt you're going to leave a comment and say you think we're going to lose this game. But if you do, let me know. Uh, give me your reasoning. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for clicking on the video. And as always, go Jags.